is in response to mycorrhizal symbiosis and caterpillar herbivory. So, thank you, Dr. Miller, for your nice introduction. Before starting, I want to, I mean, I want to thank the organizers who arranged this conference and give me the opportunity to present my research work. So after having the nice presentation on Helicoparpa Zaya, I really liked it. Let's, let's go to the world of a fungi and some solanaceous plants and let us, let us tell me to you what is happening among them. So I am investigating the gene expression in solanaceous plants so when they face herbivory challenge along with the presence of arbuscular mycorrhizal symbiosis. So why did I choose this plant family? Solanaceae is one of the largest and most economically important plant family in the world. It has several vital crops like tobacco, tomato, eggplant, and potato, and many more. So it is reasonable to see their gene expression. Now the second entity, second entity is the arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. This fungi evolved 400 million years ago with the evolution of plants, and it was capable of ma maintaining a mutualistic relationship of the plants. Nowadays, almost 80% of the terrestrial plant species are maintaining this relationship. And lastly, the third entity, that is the herbivory. As we all know, herbivory is a ubiquitous phenomena, and every plant species at least have one herbivores in their life cycle. So in here, I try to show several kinds of interaction. This three-way interaction is happening in here. In this picture, I tried to show. Now let's move to the next slide. The objective of my research work is to demonstrate the tritrophic complexity of this interaction and how this interaction can have the alteration in their gene expression and defenses in some plants. So this is the tritrophic interaction that I showed. The significance. The significance of this research work can be manifold. It can lead to a novel method of pest control that can result in the less use of chemical and synthetic pesticides that is harmful for human health. And obviously, it costs a lot, lots of money. So this is the significance of this research. So I hypothesize that the presence of this fungi will modulate the gene expression of this plant. Sometimes it can stimulate the expression. Sometimes it can suppress the expression. So which plant did I use for this study? I used five different plants for this study. All of those are in the Solanaceous family. The first one was the wild tobacco, the second one is the tomato, nightshade, brown cherry, and lastly the Australian tobacco. These are all very much fam popular or well known in the United States. Now let me introduce you briefly with this arbuscular mycorrhizal fungi. These are below ground fungi, microbial below ground fungi, and it interacts with the plants through the root system and gives the plant growth, promotion, and systemic induced resistance. So here is the picture. It is an animated picture. If we remove all the soils in here, we will be able to see the mycelium and hyphae of the fungi. And this is the microphotograph. This is showing how this fungi is penetrating the root cells of the plants. Which caterpillar did I use? I used Manduka sexta, that is tobacco hornworm. It is one of the major pests of the United States. It's this caterpillar mainly feeds on the foliage of the solanaceous plant. Here are the caterpillars and here is the life cycle. I use this fifth instar larva. This larva is the most voracious and gregarious life, is the larva, I mean most gregarious and voracious one in their life cycle. So I choose this one. So I want to tell you something about the plant defense system. Plant has two main defense systems. One is the salicylate defense way, and other one is the jasmonate pathway. The salicylate defense pathway gets activated due to the presence of pathogen, and the, path and the jasmonate one gets activated due to the presence of herbivory or some kind of ondic. But open times, there is a cross stock present available in between these two pathways. Now the bioassay. I grew the plants in a, first in a growth chamber, then transferred them in, the, in this greenhouse, and then I actually autoclaved all the soil so that I, to make sure there is no more, any, nothing, no organisms present in there. Okay, then I introduced the spores of the fungus 
in the soil and this fungus proliferated very rapidly, very, very rapidly. Then after one month of time, I introduced the caterpillar to them to do their damage thing to this plant. Now, the laboratory protocol, after one month, after having the proper feeding, I harvested the leaves, flash frozen in liquid nitrogen, did the RNA extraction, then checked the RNA quality and quantity, did the cDNA synthesis, performed qPCR, and finally, the data analysis. Now, let's move what result did I found. It wasn't interesting, let's see. Before starting the resource portion, I want to mention I had four treatments. Each treatment had four replicates. And I total analyzed 30 genes, okay? And these 30 genes, I used mean fold changes to analyze those data, then one-way ANOVA, and then Fisher's least significant difference as my statistical analysis. This is me, I'm working in the lab. <laughs> okay, now caterpillar feeding rate. It shows this figure, this graph is very simple, but it has a lots of meaning. It means here, uh, in the x-axis, I show the damage rate. In y-axis, I try to show that how much feeding is having per square centimeter of <coughs> leaf, and it really, it, as, uh, if you can see, the caterpillar didn't like the presence of fungi. In the presence of fungi, it ate the plants half than the normal plants. Okay, I will refer to this graph many times within a minute when I'll be showing my gene expression analysis. Now let's move to this gene expression graphs that I analyzed. So first, I want to say sorry to you to all my audience because I had these letters. These letters doesn't mean anything here, but it will have the meaning when I will start showing the graph. It is a problem happened due to the change from Macintosh software, Macintosh laptop to a Windows laptop, this kind of problem. So the first gene that analyzed, these are the two genes that analyzed, okay? So these two genes are kind of similar, but they had some structural difference in their hydroxyl group. So what does these two genes what what are, I mean, what are the function of these two genes? These two genes catalyze the oxidation of phenols and convert them to quinones. These quinones attack with the nucleophilic portion of the amino acids, and amino acids cannot be absorbed by the caterpillar anymore, so they will suffer from nutrition deficiency and their growth will be smaller and stunted. So here in the x-axis, I showed my treatment. In the y-axis, is the relative fold changes. The caterpillar stimulates highly, this is my control. If you compare with the control, the caterpillar is stimulated highly, but in the presence of fungi, it is again down-regulated. The same trend we can observe in the second gene too. Okay, let's see this gene. This is triomine deaminase. As the name applies, it actually catalyzes the trionine, another important amino acids in plant, in caterpillar's diet. If it destroy those amino acids, the plant will not be, able, the caterpillar will not be able, of, able to digest and it will suffer from nutrient deficiency. Again, the same trend like this, caterpillar upregulates and uh, fungi downregulates it. Then, proteinase inhibitor precursor, it, uh, it triggers the proteinase inhibitor. Proteinase inhibitor stops or block the protease enzyme in the gut, so caterpillar cannot digest the protein, again. So it is no those so again an anti nutritive function this gene has. And again we can see there are difference between the caterpillar and the presence of fungi. Now let's move to this arginine as the name applies. This arginine, arginase breaks down the arginine amino acid. And then the caterpillar will suffer from nutri nutrition deprivation. And then here, here is a different trend. The fungi is actually upregulating this gene expression. Here, the phenylalanine ammonia lies. It actually does the enzymatic removal of phenylalanine. It is so caterpillar again suffer from some nutrition and it will not like the plant materials anymore. And it will, it will don't, it will not want to eat that plant anymore. So here, a little down regulation than the caterpillar, the presence of fungi. This two gene is the owned induced proteinase inhibitor. This owned induced proteinase inhibitor, there are two against a same gene having some structural difference, win one and win two. 
in the presence of caterpillar, it is highly upregulated, but then the presence of fungi down, down regulates this gene. The same trend is happening in wing 2 2. Actually, in our gene expression analysis, having the trend, observing the trend is very much important. That's why I'm always referring to see the trend, look at the trend. Okay, let's move the ACE pathway that I mentioned, which gets activated due to the presence of fun, uh, pathogen like bacteria, viruses, or fungi. So here is ACMS, like S adenosyl methionine synthase. It actually amino propylation, or it does the amino propylation, or or some transfer of the methyl group, and triggers the synthesis of ethylene. Ethylene then act attacks those pathogens. So again, here the, it is upregulated due to the presence of caterpillar and slightly downregulated due to the presence of fungi. Now, the same gene, not same gene, I mean kind of the same gene in the SA pathway, but it transfers the carboxyl group and triggers the ethylene mechanism. It is upregulated by the presence of caterpillar and fungi down regulation. This is pathogenic related protein precursor. This starts the triggering method of the SA pathway and in the presence of fungi, it is down regulated. Again, I, you can see and the caterpillar actually upregulated this chain. This is allene oxide cyclase. This gene, what the function? This gene digests some of the allene so the caterpillar suffers from nutrient deficiency. So again, the same thing. I mean, the caterpillar, uh, we can observe, we can see the fungi is all the time, the fungi is changing its gene expression, which I tried to show in my research work. Here, the lipooxygenase. The lipooxygenase destroys the lipid peroxidation, and it produces some reactive oxygen species, like hydrogen peroxide. So, and aldehyde, which are very harmful or detrimental for the microbes. So here, the caterpillar upregulates it, but the fungi upregulates it more. There's the dehydrin, it is a drought, drought, mm -hmm. it is a drought fighting gene, and it mm -hmm. maintains the water content in the plant. In the presence of caterpillar, it is slightly upregulated than the control, but the fungi highly upregulates it. Here, the one amino cyclopropane carboxylate oxidase, it oxidizes some of the amino cyclopropane, so the caterpillar suffer from, again, some nutrient deprivation. So here we can see the fungi is actually upregulating this gene. Last gene that I want to show is the rubisco. In the normal plant, the rubisco is highly upregulated in normal plant because rubisco helps the plant to perform photosynthesis by capturing carbon dioxide from the air. But when caterpillar feeds it, the plant doesn't, it doesn't have the ability to perform photosynthesis anymore. So this gene is down-regulated. So I showed it in a reverse way. And then slightly up-regulated than this, but it's still down-regulated than the control. It makes sense for this gene. When this caterpillar present, the plant will not be able to do photosynthesis anymore. That's why this gene is down-regulated. So this is some of the interesting gene that I wanted to show you. So what I found, if I want to conclude, I found that this caterpillar and the fungi, caterpillar stimulates the gene expression, then fungi modulates it. By this way, it happens. Most of the time, the JA pathway is upregulated, is kind and the Fungi is actually down-regulates it a little bit, but the SA pathway genes are upregulated by the fungi. This result may have some significance in, in agriculture. So I want to thank my doctor, Richard Masser, my advisor, my co-advisor, Dr. Ham Masser, and Dr. Barber. Uh, he's from the Northern Illinois University. Mm -hmm. He provided me all the samples. He's a collaborator of this project, and all the lab members in, my, in our lab. Thank you. I would like to have any questions. Okay, I think we have time for one question. Do you have any questions?
doesn't have any detrimental effect on human. I mean, it is not pathogenic. It doesn't have any virulence to human. But it is beneficial for the plants. That's why we can use it as bioinsecticide instead of using those pesticides. So thank you, Antias.